On the 21st of March, 2018, I wrote this card to accompany the gift that you see on the screen. Dear Tabitha, I use this word serendipity a lot for the work we're doing together, but these happy accidents are absolutely backed by our intentional, thoughtful collaborations. So thank you for putting your head together with mine in a way that, fingers crossed, will benefit others for a long time. Sincerely, me. We've all heard of love stories that began with a serendipitous meet cute, scientific discoveries sparked by the oops of an absent-minded professor, and aha moments turned business innovation turned to gold. But what about the work we are doing together every day? Is it possible that happy accidents like these aren't exactly accidental after all? So can you engineer serendipity in collaboration? We believe that you can. No one wants to attend another meeting, a meeting that could have been an email, a meeting where the most productive thing that happened was the organization of your inbox, or worse, death by meeting, because there's yet another collaborative effort on the latest social issue, innovation, or idea by leadership. Oftentimes, we find ourselves in groups that are disorganized, lacking purpose, and seeking actual items that aren't just busy work. But what if your meetings could be enjoyable? your purpose clear, and your actual items aligned with the work that you are already doing. With the right combination of intention, space, and authenticity, your collaboration can make the change that you desire. We stumbled on how to create a container for happy accidents to happen when our committee was asked to change the story on early childhood in our community. Holding our collaboration together became our top priority when in the meeting, after Rebecca and I were voted co-chairs, we were informed there would be no funding to support our work. <laughs> Do you remember the faces in that meeting? How can I forget? It was in that very unsupported moment that we knew that individual investment in our collective purpose would be absolutely critical. It meant that we needed to name our intention. Now, this has become a buzzword of sorts for beginnings. Name your intention, describe your smart goal, write out your mission statement. We knew we needed something more than just a lofty goal. We absolutely agree with Steve Marable, who said that the universe doesn't give you what you ask for with your thoughts. The universe gives you what you demand with your intentions. To inspire or your actions. Yeah. <laughs> to inspire action in the partners at our table, we knew we needed to know not only where we wanted to go, but where we were right now in reference to that goal and what shifts minor or major in direction we were willing to be in the work we were already doing. In the work that we were doing right now to better align with our purpose. Now considering your intention in full awareness of the actions that your partners are prepared to invest from the beginning makes a big difference. Our partners are on board and passionate about creating this change together. Maintaining an action-based intention requires that you review your action items and your assignments on a regular basis through both the individual and collective lenses, rather than just piling on extra items that nobody has any um, buy-in to do or time and energy to accomplish. This does require some connection through proximity. Yes, we are saying you need to calendar another meeting. So space is the first thing we usually set up with our collaboration. How often and where are we going to meet? This is the stuff I love to do. Getting agendas out a week in advance, making sure there's a quick turnaround on minutes, selecting meeting spaces with natural light, arranging the tables, and setting up for activities so that collaboration can really happen. I also insist that our meetings end and begin on time. Now, punctuality can be an issue for any collaboration. Let's face it, our calendars are full, and sometimes life happens. Our desire as co-chairs to really honor the space that we have created and the individuals coming into it helped us to step right into this next serendipitous element. Initially, we began each meeting with introductions and updates, but after a while, that felt empty and meaningless, so we asked a question instead. This went so well that we decided to begin and end every meeting with a thoughtful question. Now, our openers may seem irrelevant at times. We ask things like, what are you excited about? What book are you reading now? 
What does spring cleaning mean to you? What's your favorite app on your phone? And tell me about your last interaction with a child of the age of three. Three things you need to know about these questions. First, there are no wrong answers. Second, they, we are genuinely interested in the responses. And third, they're absolutely tied to our agenda, even if it isn't obvious at first or not. Now these question answer sessions um, not only served as transitional spaces for our very arrival times, but they carried with them an invitation to be authentically present in our purpose. You see, we have a diverse group of individuals who do not see or approach the world in the same way. So these no-pressure presentations of personal opinion really ignited and reinforced our capacity to communicate collectively. Because of this, our mid-meeting collaborations became enlivened and um, engaging interactions of where we exchanged ideas and information, and no one was afraid to share different perspectives. The added bonus to this level of personal engagement is that we, <clears throat> being all present at that table, are more likely to carry out those ideas and things brewed collectively into our individual and separate roles in the community. So the momentum and enthusiasm um, that we that are sparked together are not lost when we're alone or apart. On the other hand, the questions that we ask after the meeting are never addressed publicly. These are pointed and challenging because we really value the kaleidoscope of perspective and experience at our table. We make sure that we give the space to our partners to express their negative feedback authentically as well. This is done through anonymous feedback, um, through surveys, or through for written comments, so that we are very aware of both our successes and our failures. And we take the feedback from these anonymous surveys and we implement it immediately. And what we found was that the language started to change from negative and critical comments like, we shouldn't have done that, or I didn't like that, to wouldn't it be cool if, or what if we did this instead? By implementing the feedback right away, we built trust with our team, and our meetings became full of possibilities. We also don't defend our past actions. This was helpful in turning around what I like to call the data debacle. If you're like me, data bores you to tears as someone shows you Excel sheet after Excel sheet of numbers. For months, we fixated on a baseline number of only three. It needed to be at least 100, and it wasn't changing. From the feedback, we decided to make a radical change. We went against the data assignment we were given, started to focus on what we knew we could do, and planned projects outside of the scope of the assignment. Enthusiasm picked up, and the numbers started to change. We were malleable to the feedback and corrected course. At the end of Rebecca's note, she wrote, P.S. This is the dime I picked up just as we were struck by a stroke of genius. Now, the truth is neither Tabitha nor I remember exactly what that stroke of genius was. We have, our movie was such momentum toward our attention that we've learned to smile, acknowledge the gift of serendipity, and go to work. But it was about six months or so before this gift was given that we decided to really analyze our process. What was going on inside our collaborations that was different than others? And so many moments of serendipity kept happening, not just for the two of us, but for all of the partners at our table. Our work is continuously renewed and propelled forward by the unexpected, and it is absolutely illuminating. So, here we are with a word of caution. You cannot fall or fly unless you are moving forward, but doing so as one toward an action-based intention where all of the partners at your table are authentically present and malleable to the process will absolutely ignite this chain reaction. Should you choose to set this process in motion, you will come to know, as we have, that no matter the question to be answered, the problem to be solved, or the challenge to be overcome, the resolution will be there at exactly the right moment. The magic of serendipity is in not knowing the who, where, what, or when that happy accident will be. Collaboration is so important. It takes the hands and voices of many to make impactful change in our community. Can you enter your serendipity and collaboration? Yes, yes we, we can. can.